Hello all. Um, I'm here today to check in and do a brief chat about um, the latest book that I just finished and it is called Fix by Ferret Steinmetz. There is the e-cover because I read this um, uh, electronically as I usually read most of my books so I hope that we don't have too much of a glare there. Um, I'm not terribly crazy about the covers. This particular cover is uh, Paul, our bureaucracy-loving hero of this third um, book in the Mancy series. So yeah, this book fix, uh, like I is like I just said, it's the third third in a series, and sadly enough, I think it's the last. I understand it is the last of this particular series, which is called the Mancy series um, by Ferret Steinmetz. I read the first two books actually last year. I stumbled across the first book, Flex, in, um, I think I read it in like March or April of last year when it had just come out. And then um, I got hooked into this world right away. And uh, when the, the Flux came out, then in October of last year, I read that right away. And this one just came out in September. So I have just finished it up. So what it's about, if you didn't see my wrap-up video from last uh, December when I was doing my 2015 wrap-up, the series is set in, um, it's a fantasy series, and it's set in... Um, really, um, you know, our world that's very easily recognized as, as ours, um, really the only sort of significant difference in their world, in our, our world, is their world contains magic. And how magic happens in that world is when people become, when certain people become obsessed with something or they love something so much, um, they, uh, they can develop magic around it. So I mentioned Paul, who is sort of the main character of these first three books. Um, he has developed, um, magic or Mancy as it's called, um, around bureaucracy because he, uh, loved bureaucracy. He worked in an insurance company and he just loves, you know, he had this sort of obsession with order and with filling out forms. And so his magic involves this. Um, so he can, for example, part of his magic is he can go and backdate things. He can change, um, uh, you know, he can change records, so therefore he can change to some degree history, um, and I'll talk about more of that in a minute, the cost of doing Mancy, but he's one of our main characters. He's a bureaucromancer, so bureaucracy mancer. Um, then his best friend is, her name is Valentine, and she is a video game mancer because, um, you know, her obsession obviously has been video games, and so her magic, um, you know, she can do things like uh, quest things, and she can, um, you know, she's obviously, you know, very good at fighting as well well because she can shield and you know this type of thing um and um become various video game characters that I'm not myself a gamer but am familiar enough with the main games that I could sort of follow sometimes who she was conjuring uh just you know from Mortal Kombat or from even Mario and uh really all sorts of video games so then our other main characters in as the as these as the series has progressed and in this final one our main characters are Paul his best friend Valentine her boyfriend Robert who was was um has had um fight club mancy so you know he was obviously obsessed with the movie fight club and so his mancy developed around that and then paul's wife imani she is actually a mundane she does not have magic um but she um if in the previous um uh, book, and uh, The Flux, is sort of pulled into their world, and um, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute, too. And then the final sort of main character in this little family group is um, is Paul and Imani's uh, young daughter, who in the third um, novel is um, 13 years old, and she is also a video game master. And she became, uh, through... Um, you know, odd circumstances and a certain set of circumstances in book two, which I don't want to give away. 
she, or actually, I guess it started even in book one, she um, became a mancer at a very young age. Usually, Mancy takes, uh, you know, well into middle age or, you know, into well into your th at least 30s to develop because of, you know, the time it takes to become that obsessed with something. But, um, you know, outside of these main characters, there are actually mancers from all sorts of, uh, there's origami mancers, there's really any kind of, um, in this particular uh, novel, we end up meeting, um, you know, a lace making uh uh, mancer, uh, tracking, um, you know, like hunting and tracking mancer, um, carpentry mancers, um, someone who's like building shelves, um, <laughs> that kind of mancy. So we meet all sorts of, um, mancers in, in this, in this third, third uh, novel. So about mancy, you know, just to establish again, sort of this rules of these rules of the universe, um, mancy comes at a cost. So when, um, when Mancy is used, uh, this magic is used, if it violates the laws of the universe too much, our universe too much, then there is a, a blowback, and that blowback is called flux. And it's not karma, because it's not based on justice. It's just um, the universe writing itself, and it will, it's sort of bad luck, um, but it will strike uh, it will find a, a channel to strike, um, maybe not even the person who did the Mancy, but someone around him or innocent people. Um, so it can be very, very dangerous. And in this particular world, um, this particular universe, um, the Mancers were called into action during World War II and uh, became part of World War II and actually caused what's caused what is called a brooch, which if there is that flux can build up, and if the flux is too much and can't be channeled into another, uh, into other, um, areas, then it can cause a brooch in our physics, which is a brooch in our reality. And another reality then tries to come in, which has whole different natural laws. For example, different natural laws of light, uh, speed of light, or different laws of geometry. And so it really, needless to say, you know, screws things up. So what has happened in World War II is this has happened in on a large scale. And so large parts of Europe have become uninhabited. So to the book in particular, that sort of the background. So as we pick up this novel, in our previous novel, uh, we left off Paul and Imani, Valentine and their daughter, Aliyah, Valentine, his best friend, and her boyfriend Robert, kind of on the run because the government, um, Mancy in this in this world, uh, Mancers themselves are feared heavily. They're, most mundane people are terrified of Mancers. They're actually fairly rare, and um, so the government looks for them. And when they are found, they are sent away to what um, Paul and the rest of the Mancers outside of this network feel are like re-education camps where their minds are, uh, where they are brainwashed into sort of a collective. And so they're on the run from that, but they have been, they have spent the last several years, um, like five or six years between these books, uh, between the flux, the second book and this book we're in now, sort of working, uh, on the run in secret. They built a group, an organization called Project Mayhem, and they are actually working, um, uh, against the government, sort of under the radar, are trying to stay, you know, away, one step away from the authorities and try to turn around the perception of, of Mancy in the general population because they are ultimately after social justice for people like them. So, um, the book, this particular book is set up, um, I won't give a lot of it away because a lot of the fun of the reading the book is actually, you know, going on this adventure with them. Um, they, they do, um, encounter the Unimancers, which is this group of the government, um, has this group of mancers that have been, um, you know, caught and, um, they are called unimancers. And in Paul and Imani and Valentine's and Robert's view, these are the brainwashed sort of, um, board collective of, uh, government agents. Um, and, um, they, um, they wind up, um, they wind up having a confrontation with them. They actually wind up going to Europe, um, 
and, and working on, you know, trying to address the big, the big brooch there among many other sort of complications that arises. And I don't want to give it away too much because it was so much fun to read. This book is a lot of fun, though. You know, sometimes whenever you talk about fantasy, though, and you talk about fun, you talk about a book that, you know, it's adventure, you know, it's a page turner. It's a lot of fun, but it's, you know, there's not a lot there. There's not a lot of fiber there to digest. So it's, there's, it's just sort of, um, really, you know, surface fun. But this, this fantasy series to me was more than that. It was, you know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of political aspects here that are, that are discussed in the book. And, um, you know, ultimately there's some really, there's some really big concepts about love, about love that brings on Mancy and then love between friends and love between family and love versus obsession and you know when love love that is can be a very powerful force for good and also a very powerful and destructive powerfully destructive force in the worlds of Mansi and in these these people's own personal lives so you know there's a lot of there's a lot else there there's a lot of political um, aspects to this because there's a, there's really it, this these 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 novels really um this fantasy series really explores ideas political ideas of individualism versus you know community and you know the creativity of individual action um and then also the strength of community and how you know how those are that's a fluid line about what's good for people um and not necessarily good for what's good for one is not necessarily, you know, good for another. And so, you know, there's there's that. And so there's a lot to this series more than just um, a romping good time uh, to me. Uh, so, you know, there's a few other things that I just loved about this book. For one, I love the fact that Paul's best friend is a woman. Um, you don't see this so much um you know, I don't think in fantasy sci-fi science fiction fantasy, um, that has this sort of mature um, view, I think, where, you know, there's really not anything sexual between them at all, but they really connect on a very deep level, and they're, they're you know, they're very best friends, and so a lot of times when, when you have heterosexual people like this in, in, in science fiction fantasy, you know, they just can't resist the urge to put in sexual tension there, and this was such a relief that this author never did that thank you um because that was so cool um that t that they have this mature relationship with each other um you know um valentine is a flawed person valentine is paul's best friend they're all flawed people they're all people just like um so they're all they're not superhero people they're just um people who who love what they do you know and they love they love what they love and they love who they love um you know the other the other kind of cool thing about this book I think another other cool things about this book there was a gender queer character in this in this in this book which is another thing you don't often see in science fiction and fantasy um you know there was there was there were homosexual characters so this you know there's a diverse set of of ways of being and this was something the ultimate lesson of the mancers is that you know each one's individual mancy is beautiful you know, it's it's because it's something that they've loved. And it's something that they've created just that that's just theirs, and it's unique to them. And so they're individuals, and yet they're outcasts from society largely for this reason. Um, but yet they don't let that stop them. And you know, I thought that was I think that's just so cool. So I am um, going to be very sorry to um, not. I hope Ferret Steinmetz actually comes back to this world, although I'm going to miss this group of people. I think he said in the afterword, uh, the acknowledgments of the book, which are well worth reading. They're very funny uh, and very entertaining. If you, A lot of times we skip the acknowledgments at the end, but please don't do that if you read this book. Um, he mentions he would like to, to go back to this world at some point in the future, and I sincerely hope he does. So... Loved it. Um, I'll stop with that. I uh, should have another uh, book check coming up just as soon as I finish my next book, which shouldn't be too long. So I will see you then. Thanks. Bye.